how do you decide if you've got a product that's been selling um, but it's starting to wane off? How do you decide if it's a still a viable product for you to sell? In this video, I'm going to show you. Now, if you like this kind of information, I'm helping you make critical decisions about your Amazon business. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. That way, I'll know to do more things like this for you. Also, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. We post brand new information just like this each and every day. And uh, if you've got any questions about this, comment below and I'll answer them personally for you. With that being said, let's get into it. You're selling a product, okay? And uh, how do you determine that that product is no longer a viable product to sell, okay? So that is the question. Let me give you a few ways to think about that. And, and of course, it's not making any money. That ought to be our baseline, okay? It doesn't make any money. However, money is an interesting one. So let me give you some diff different ways to think about it. Uh, I used to sell probiotics for dogs. It's actually one of the first like big winning products that I created. Basically, I saw that probiotics were popular in humans. I knew that humans anthropomorphize our pets. Therefore, it made sense to me that probiotics for dogs would become popular. Whether or not dogs actually need probiotics was a totally different discussion. But I knew that probiotics for dogs would become popular, okay? In much the same way that now, you know, dogs have got... Um, um, roast beef and gravy and mashed potato dinner, like shit like that, okay? Anyway, so it got to the point where I was thinking about selling about this product. It was kind of on the way in. Uh, the product itself kind of, there's a lot of competitors com coming into it as a marketplace. Um, I knew that all the easy money had been made and I had a lot of people kind of coming in, taking chunks out of the money I was making from it. So I had to think about the business, okay? So the process I went through was I thought about it in a, in a I think, a very, very different way. And so one of the first thing I thought about was, um, are there any personal benefits to me of selling, the pro selling this product? And what I mean by that is, there's intangible things associated with some products that give you um, good feelings. They make you feel good. Oh, I'm selling in a I'm selling a doggy related product. Well, that's a nice feel good thing to do. Okay, and when people would ask me what I do, I would get to say, Oh, I sell I sell in the doggy niche, and it's uh, I sell health products for dogs and they go oh that's very nice how interesting for you and so there was like a, a sense of being feeling good from the product and I don't think that should be discounted that kind of feel good factor about a product I don't think that should be discounted uh, so if you if there are um, benefits over and above financial and there always are of course um, then that ought to be taken into consideration when you're thinking about the longevity of the product, okay? That should be something you, like, do you like selling the product? Are there additional emotional benefits that you get from selling it? That should be something you take into consideration, okay? Um, I also think that you should take into consideration things like um, your overall brand. So if you just sell one product, Okay, you don't need to take any of that shit into consideration. But if you sell a suite of products for, in this case, dogs, I didn't, but you know, um, then you'd want to take into consideration the impact that the first sale has on the other products in your product suite. So um, oftentimes, um, you have a lead-in product you know, in coals and woolies and places like that, you'll often see them advertising milk very, very cheaply. And the reason they do that is because they want to get you into the store to buy the milk very, very cheaply, because then they know they'll put the milk at the very back of the store. You'll have to walk past everything else. Chances are you'll spot some other things that you need. You'll buy those things, okay? It's a lead-in product. Um, this product that you're selling that you're thinking about 
if you sell other products, could be a lead-in product. That sale of that first thing could lead to sales of other things as well. And so um, it's, it's better to take into consideration something called lifetime value within your business and to think about that um, relative to what you're doing. So for instance, an, an, an Aussie online entrepreneurs, okay, easy example for everybody to wrap their heads around. Oftentimes in the Aussie online entrepreneurs, we do a sale on the Aussie online entrepreneurs where it's $1 to join the Aussie online entrepreneurs for 30 days. Now, I'd have to be insane to give that away for a dollar. The acquisition cost for a customer for the Aussie online entrepreneurs is between 150 and $270 per person, depending on the marketing channel. So I lose money every single time I let somebody join for a dollar, okay? I lose a shitload of money. However, because I know lifetime value, it makes sense to the business to do that because ultimately some people stay, they buy other things, and that makes profits, okay? That's that's what I mean when I say look at your product in light of the other things that you sell and does that one product um, then lead to other sales within that same product suite? You've got to take that into consideration as well before you think about it, okay? So you could be losing money on that product, but it because you get a customer, you're then able to sell them other things, and then as a result of that, you make a lot of money, okay? Starbucks is a classic example of that. Starbucks, what's a Starbucks cost? Five dollars, uh, but Starbucks lifetime customer value is, last time I checked, it was $5,800 that a customer would spend at Starbucks over their lifetime. $5,800, a Starbucks cost five dollars. You know, now that they know that, they can market very, very differently knowing that each customer is worth $5,800 to them. Of course, they've got to think about their cash flow, but it, it alters the way you think about customer acquisition. Anyway, um, bah, bah, bah. could that one product, so this is what I did, could that one product be sold? Could you just sell that one product off, okay? The easiest way to sell off of, well, this is how you used to have to do it. It's actually easier to do it now because Amazon's actually made it easy again. But the, the way you used to do it is um, you would just take the product that you were selling and you would let somebody come and hijack the product, okay? And that hijacker would be the uh, acquirer of the of the uh, product, that one product. They would hijack it and you would stop selling it. They would start selling it, bada boom, bada bing. You're out of that market, they're in that market, okay? So that was a very, very easy way of doing that and that worked really, really well. So. If you're thinking, if you're at that point where I don't know if I should continue with it, then maybe you could just sell it, okay? Maybe you could just do that as an easy way of doing it. Uh, something else I have done which works really, really well is if I've got a product that is kind of slowly just, you know, it's making money, but it's it's all about ROI. So let's just talk purely financials, okay? So if you've got $1,000 to invest, Clearly, what you're wanting to do with that $1,000 is make as much money as possible from it, okay? Uh, that is called return on investment, ROI. So what you're looking to do is you look at the amount of money you invest in the product, and then you analyze the amount of money that product makes for you, and then you've got a choice. You can either say, well, um, given that it makes, I don't know, 100%, just for argument's sake, 100%, um, would I, do I believe I've got a better opportunity where I could make 200% ROI? Do I believe I've got that? Because if you do, then it makes sense to alter where you put your money and put it into this new thing because you've got a better ROI on it. Okay, so that's another way of thinking about it. And that's the purely financial side of things. Okay, uh, one thing I have done is um, I've got a product that's been, you know, it's just kind of just chugging along. It hasn't, it hasn't been getting better. It's been slowly getting a bit worse. And what I've done is I've gone to my supplier and said, hey, um, I'm at th this product is kind of at the end of the line, but I've, 
but the way it's going, there's still probably another year or so left before it actually just stops making money. Would you like to be in business with me in that product? And what we'll do, we, we'll go into a deal whereby you are effectively a 50-50 partner in that product. We'll continue to sell it on Amazon, but we do a deal whereby we're 50-50 in it. So then the suppliers in that business with you and the suppliers getting a percentage of your uh, profits, but also, of course, you're getting the suppliers rates as far as the product production costs go. Does that make sense? So you think about it a little bit differently as a way of extending the um, usable life of the pro product. Um, the supplier starts funding. There's lots and lots of different ways to cut this up, okay? But a simple way of doing it is the supplier gives you terms, for instance, 90-day terms. Um, you pay 30% of that, the supplier gives you 90 day terms, meaning you don't have to pay the money back for 90 days. The business can be can go on a lot, lot longer with those kind of terms. So that's another way of doing it as well. Um, should you carry on selling a product like that? What are my things? Well, that's what I look at, okay? So if you're just gonna come from a purely financial point of view, I don't think that's the right thing to do. I think there's a lot of extra additional things to take into consideration before you think about whether or not you're going to kill a product. Um, and that's going to depend on this on the individual circumstances. But that's giving you some extra things to think about relative to that. Hayden says, when dumb money enters the market, totally. Yeah, so what that means is, um, if you get a, if you're in a marketplace, let's just say it's this probiotics things, okay, which is exactly what happened to me. Um, and then a lot of beginners come into the marketplace and they don't know what the hell they're doing, um, but they've just got a lot of money and they start throwing that money at uh, Amazon PPC and ranking and things like that. Okay, so just dumb money, throw, throw, throw. Uh, this happens heaps. Then uh, that's a good like warning sign. Hey, this market could be at that zenith point where it's just about to start heading down, okay? That was a video from my regular Monday night Q&A session with the members of the Aussie Online Entrepreneurs. Over two and a half thousand members and growing. We're actually the fastest growing e-commerce community right here in Australia with sales of over 50 million dollars. If you'd like to find out more about what we do at the Aussie Online Entrepreneurs, get yourself off to www.aussieonlineentrepreneurs.com.au and I will see you on the inside. Until then, bye.